Hello to all of you, this is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we will understand non-linear ideal model in EVUs. First of all, we will have to understand the concept of asymmetry for this purpose. Now just imagine two situations. The in first situation, a child has completed the graduation, what will be the father's reaction? In the second situation, a child is found smoking, what will be the father's reaction? Do you think that in both the circumstances, the father's reaction will be in the same magnitude? Why not? So the same concept applies for our regression model also. Consider two variables, export X and GDBY. Suppose a positive relationship exists between these two variables. The question is, is the magnitude of change in GDP same in both the directions? Why not? Symmetric relationship means that the degree of impact of x on y is same when x increases as, as when x decreases. There might be a possibility that the increase in export has a stronger impact on price than a decrease in export or perhaps the vice versa. If we find that the magnitude of impact is not same in both the sides of the change, then we conclude that the impact of volatility on GDP is asymmetric. Consider the following long run OLS model. So yt is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xt plus the error term, where the y is a target variable and x is a regression, which means that the change in y per unit change in x. This captures the direction and the magnitude of x on y. Suppose the relationship between x and y is positive so that the beta 1 is equal to 0. This beta 1, uh, beta 1 is greater than 0. Example, beta 1 is equal to 2. This means that if x increases, y increases as 2 times as much. And if x decreases, y decreases 2 times as much. But this assumption of asymmetry does not hold good in the reality. NRDL separates the reaction of y to negative and positive changes in y. To capture the effects of asymmetry, NRD, NRDL decomposes x into two parts. One, the partial sum of positive change in x denoted by x plus and the partial sum of negative change in x denoted by x negative. Both x positive and x negative are included as separate regressions in the NRDL model. So, x is de decomposed into x positive and x negative. So, yt is equal to now beta 0 plus beta 1, the positive part, xt positive plus beta 1 positive, xt negative, plus the error term. Now, the original ERDN model, which was given by Passion, Seen and Smith in 2001, it consists of the first difference of y, some legs of the first difference of y, current plus some legs of first difference of x, first leg of y and first leg of x. This model was modified by seen in 2001 to make it as an NRDL model. Now this model consists of first difference of y which was already there, some legs of first difference of y which was already there in the original ERDL model, but the original x is now decomposed into two parts, current plus some legs of first difference of x positive, current plus some legs of first difference of x negative. First leg of y, first leg of partial sum of positive change in x, first leg of partial sum of negative change in x. So this is a short run terms and these are all long run terms. Now how we are giving this effect, let's try to understand. Here, the original data consisted of 5. We are breaking that into x positive and x negative. Now, when we go in the second row, there is a decrease from 5 to 1 and therefore we will write down here minus 4. And here it will be indicated as 0. Now, in the third row, the x is increasing from 1 to 8 and therefore I will indicate this as 7 positive and x negative is 0. Here again it is increasing from 8 to 9 and this is calculated as, uh, this we, uh, we get it as 1. So here the positive slope is 1.51, that is beta 1. And the negative slope is 1.23, that is beta 2. So we want to test, is there any significant difference in positive and negative slope? 
If the difference is significant, we will say that the asymmetries exist. And if the difference is not significant, we will say that the regression equation is symmetric. We will carry out the bounds test to confirm the above positive, uh, positive and negative asymmetries. So our null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the positive and negative asymmetries, which is null hypothesis. If we reject edge zero, we conclude that the variables are co-integrated in the presence of asymmetry. Now, what's the difference between ERDL versus a NADR, NARDL? In the study on unemployment output relationship in the US, Canada, and Japan, seen at L, found a strong evidence of long-run asymmetry. They found in particular that the unemployment is more sensitive to economic downturns than to the blooms. In effect, the firm are quick to fire and slow to hire. But on the same data set, when the symmetric ARDL model was applied, results showed no evidence. When the asymmetry was introduced in the model, results showed the evidence. To run the NRDL model, we are having some assumptions. Check all the variables are stationary at level or first difference, but neither of the variables should be I2, that is a stationary at second difference. Now, how to run this NRDL model? Let's see in eViews. Now, to run any NRDL model, we will have to go in add-ins, manage add-ins, and make sure that you install NRDL model from here. Activate this and press install. Once the installation is completed, you will be able to see the model here, okay? Now, how to run this? Go in Manage Add-ins, available. Click on NADL, Install, click OK. Yes, 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 click OK. Now, to run the NA, NARDL model, it is necessary that you will run first ARDL model. So I'll specify that the, my cells is a dependent variable price, repairs, open as equation. I'll activate the ERDL model from here. I'll change this to fixed, make this as constant, and I'll press OK, and I've got the results. You can see here, we are having the legs of dependent variable, independent variable and independent variable that is a lag of price and repairs but still our independent variables have not been decomposed i want to decompose them so for this i will go in addings make non-linear ARDL. so it's giving me an error no threshold variable is listed no need to worry click ok now you go in view Click on labels and in this box, write down Azim was and you specify the independent variables which you want to decompose. I'm just uh, make sure you only write down independent variables which you want to decompose into the positive and negative. So I'll here include price, repairs, enter. Now, again, go back in add-ins, make non-linear ERDL. You can see that the decomposition has taken place. That is price positive, one period lag, price positive, two period lag, price positive, three period lag, price positive, four period lag. Similarly, price negative, one period. So repairs, four period positive, and repairs, four periods 
negative. Now you will have to see the p values of this. You can see here price positive one period lag. Its p value is less than 0 0.05 and therefore it is significant. That is minus 1633. But on this, if we if we talk about price negative, one period lag, it is insignificant. And therefore, it seems that there is a presence of asymmetry. So for, we will have to further confirm this by running the coefficient diagnostics test. So I will go in view, coefficient diagnostics, and I will run long run, long run forms and bounds test. Click on it. And I'll get the results. Now you can see here that we have got the co-integrating equation here. So you should report this first co-integrating equation. So this is the co-integrating equation and EC is the error correction uh, model here. Now you will have to see the p-value of all this. That is price positive, price negative, repairs positive and repairs negative. In this case, all of them are having the p-value more than 0 0.05 and therefore we will conclude that there is no significant difference in price positive effect on sales in comparison to price negative and its effect on sales. But if the p-value was significant, then the difference then the interpretation would change a little bit. Now, how it will change? Let's see. You can see that price positive, it is 114. And price negative is minus 5242. Price uh, repairs positive is minus 131. And repairs negative is 99.71. Now, in case if these variables were significant, then any increase in price will increase sales. If this was significant, then increase in price will increase sales by 1114.19 and any decrease in price will decrease the sales by 42, uh, that is minus 424, uh, minus 5242. So we'll have to understand this, uh, this price negative and price positive. Now here the interpretation is little bit tricky. This is positive, this is negative, this is positive and this is also positive, this is negative that is price negative and uh, the coefficient is negative. Now listen to me very carefully. I am doing some correction to my previous interpretation. Please listen carefully. Any increase in price here will increase the sales by 114.19 unit. Any decrease in price will decrease, that is decrease the sales will increase by 5242. That is one unit of decrease of this will increase the sales because negative negative is there, negative negative is there, will increase the sales by 5242. Right? Because this is also negative and this is also negative. Now this is positive and this is negative. This is negative and this is positive. So any increase in repairs will decrease the sales by minus 139. And any decrease in repairs will increase the sales by 99.71. Okay. So here, if price positive, if it is increasing, this, if this is increasing, the sales will increase. But if price negative, if price is dropping, so this negative and this negative, your sales will increase by 5242, which is quite legitimate, right? Here, price repairs positive, means any increase in repairs, any increase in repairs will decrease the sales by minus 131. And any decrease in repairs will increase the sales by 99.71. I hope things are quite clear. Now, you will have to go further and you will have to interpret this part also. So I'll copy this and I'll take this in the word file. 
and here you will have to see the F statistics. So this value you will have to compare with I0 and I1, this one. So this is the value of I0 at 10%, 5%, 2.5% and 1%. Normally we consider the 5% values only and this value is to be compared. So if this value is less than I0, first scenario, or this value is more than I1. So if, if F statistics value is more than I1 here, if, it is, if the value is more than 4.01, then there is a presence of long run relationship. If F statistics is less than I0, then there is a presence of, if, if this value is less than this one, then there is a presence of short run relationship. Here, F statistics value is 1.823, which is less than 2.86, this one. So only short run effects are present. Now we will make NRDL multiplier graph. So, add in NRDL multiplier graph and you will get two outputs. You can minimize here and you will get two graphs. One for the price and another for the repairs. Kindly maximize the price. You will get many lines. So, first we will see the dark line. The dark line is multiplier for price that is a positive the price positive. The dotted line, this one is a multiplier for price negative. This red dotted line is asymmetry plot. And these are the confidence interval 1 and 2. Now, first of all, we will we should always interpret this thing, red dotted line. If this red dotted line of asymmetry and its confidence interval, this confidence interval are nearer to zero if this red dotted line and this confidence interval this both the uh, dotted line this one and this one they are nearer to zero it means that asymmetric effects are not significant if the red dotted line of asymmetry is far away from zero axis then the asymmetry effect is significant which you can see here the asymmetry effect is significant this means that the price in that is a price positive its effect on uh, sales and price negative and its effect on sales are not symmetrical now let us understand this black dotted lines so the dark black line this one that is a change in sales when there is a positive shock in price this one sorry both of them are getting this one Okay, then dotted black line, this one, that is a change in sales when there is a negative shock in price. You can see in the long run, that is lag one, lag two, lag three, lag five. So in the long run, price change has more effect as we move away from one, three. So effects are more prominent. The positive change curve gives information about the asymmetry adjustments of the dependent variable to positive shocks in the independent variable at a given forecasting horizon. The positive and negative shocks are more prominent in the long run. Now let us see for the repairs. In case of the repairs also, this red dotted line is far away from zero axis and their confidence intervals are also far away. Moreover, you can see uh, this blue line is for the multiplier for repairs positive and this dotted line is for the multipliers for the repairs negative. Now in the last, we will plot the cumulative sum graph. So I will go in add-ins.
Now, many of the research scholars contact me and uh, they, they face a problem that they are not able to see the particular man. Now, e-views is quite sensitive that you are in which window. Say, for example, if you are in this window, your add-ins menu will be different. If you are in this window, your add-ins menu will be different. So, to activate the Kusum graph, it is necessary that you should be in this equation window. Then only you will be able to get the NRDL Kusum and Kusum Q graphs. So, activate from here and you will get two graphs here. One, Kusum and another is a Kusum of squares. First of all, maximize this window. So, Kusum is a cumulative sum. It assesses the stability of the coefficients in the regression model. The null hypothesis is coefficients are stable. Alternative is coefficients are not stable. If this blue line is between this two dotted line, red dotted line, it means that the coefficients are stable, null is accepted. We don't have any formal p-value for this. We have to just understand that if this is between this two, then the coefficients are stable. Now you minimize this and activate the Kusum sum of squares. So at 0.45, you can see that 0.45, the blue line touches the red line. In any case, if it had crossed, we will say it has crossed the critical region and there is a structural brace. If, if this had crossed this red dotted line, then there is a strong possibility that there is a structural break in the in, in the series it means that the volatility is not constant in the model and therefore the null is rejected so your null we are rejecting the null here if this if this line crosses the red dotted line so for more videos on panel data regression using eviews kindly refer to my playlist i already uploaded many videos which are related to the panel data regression Please subscribe to my channel and press the like button. You can also follow me on the uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. Please don't forget to press the like button.